recording this morning. So Allison, I'm gonna let you admit people if you don't mind while I get started. Thank you. All right, we are so happy to have you all here with us today as we provide a little bit more information about our BX3 project and accepting applications for cohort four. Um, I'm Dr. Sheila Smith. I am the coordinator for the Arkansas Behavior Support Specialist, and there are 17 of us, and we serve the entire state. We have behavior support specialists assigned to every co-op. And uh, they are all on the phone are on the Zoom with us this morning. So you'll see their faces on there as well. Um, we are going to just spend some time talking uh, just a little bit about giving some information about BX3 and what are the steps necessary to apply. And we will have some time for Q&A at the end. But please, if you have a question along the way and you, you're like me, you just don't want to forget that, just drop it in the chat and we'll be monitoring those questions as well. So let's tell you, um, let's get started by telling you a little bit about BX3. So it's been almost five years ago since we started the BX3 project. And since then, we've gone through some, I would say some pretty major renovations <laughs> and modifying um, what, what our purpose is with this project. So we've moved our focus to helping buildings kind of build capacity as they, as they build their tiered systems of support for those positive behaviors. Um, so five years ago when we started, we went in and we were thought, we're just gonna work on tier three and we're gonna help support districts at tier three and build teams and help them do some very individualized student, student planning. And we quickly realized our districts needed assistance in building those tier one supports for all students and then building the tier two and then building in those tier three. So we have modified our project now so that we we are really working on individual uh, district needs and helping them de develop what does tiered system of support for behaviors look like for their districts, which we're really excited about. I'll say VX3 is probably the, the, the project that we value so much and that we all love and enjoy doing. We love working with our districts and coaching them through the process. Um, so we often are asked, you know, why should I join VX3? What, what benefits am I going to see from that? So in, additional, in addition to building your tiered system of support for behavior, you're also going to see improvement in teacher satisfaction, instructional time, academic achievement, and administrator time. And we know that last one is a biggie. Um, administrators are spending a lot of their time dealing with office discipline referrals. So it's really exciting when we're coaching and we're working with districts and they come back and um, they've put in some school-wide supports and they see that those office discipline referrals start to go down and they have more time to get out there and do some of the activities that they want to do in supporting teachers and students. So some of those positive behavior supports that we um, we help the districts work through as they go through is just kind of coaching them through are building those expectations and behavior matrix. So you'll learn all about the behavior matrix in the school wide positive behavior training. And then we kind of help you bring that to life. We help coach you through that process of building that behavior matrix, if that's where you're starting, helping uh, your teachers know how to teach those behavior expectations that are listed on the matrix, and then looking at your discipline system. What does your discipline system look like? How have you identified those majors and minors and coaching through that process? Um, and then also just having some rewards and recognition uh, programs for students and staff. So as we kind of work through those, help you develop those tiered systems of support, and a lot of our districts are starting at tier one. So if you have gone through our school-wide training and you're, you're thinking, we are just starting, we are at ground zero, that's okay. We can start, we are going to start where you're at in the process and help coach you through um, where you want to be. So we know through like providing those positive behavior supports, we also just see a positive change in teacher and student morale as well. It just really affects and um, helps encourage a more positive classroom climate and environment. So those are some reasons. Those are some of the biggie reasons. And moving on to like, what is BX3 pro? What is the BX3? 
three project. You might be asking yourself like, what, what am I going to be signing up for? So what, what it encompasses is that we assist districts in completing the tiered fidelity inventory. And, um, this measurement just helps your districts assess where are you with your tiered systems of positive behavior support. So it's we start there to get a baseline measure. Where are you at in the process? What have you established? What are some things that you want to continue to work on? And then we help you develop an action plan. So that action plan, you're developing one to three SMART goals based on the TFI, based on building your tiered system of support for behavior. Um, those goals are individualized to your district. What does your district need? Where, where do they need help? And then we provide coaching. So we come on site, we coach you through the process of if this is the goal that you want to work on and it's related to getting a behavior matrix in place, we're going to help you kind of brainstorm and talk through that process and give you some ideas and some encouragement of where and how to get that action plan um, moving forward. And you may ask, okay, what if I what if I reach those goals? What if we we establish one to three goals? What's next? We we just keep moving forward based on your results of your TFI. We pick you your team will select some other goals and we will continue coaching. So it is a one year commitment. And then in March of next year, if you're selected, we will ask you if you would like to continue in the process. So you can continue and participate in multiple years, but we do ask for that one year commitment beginning um, when you do apply and when you're accepted. And we love coming on site. We love coaching. Uh, Nikita Reno and I were at Pottsville Junior High on Friday, and they we got to actually see it in action uh, with their teacher and student rewards and recognition systems. We saw the teachers re, um, receive their names were called out from tickets, and they came up to the office and were so excited about what they were going to get to choose from the board of, of rewards and then the students as well. So it's just really encouraging for us too to see your district grow and improve in the area of positive behavior supports. So you may be asking, how do I know if our building level team um, is ready? What are the requirements to apply for BX3? Well, the first thing is that you do have a building level team that's meeting monthly. And that team can be dedicated to working on behavior. We want this to be a very easy process for you. So if you have teams that are already meeting, you have leadership teams, you have um, different teams that are meeting already, just think about how can I use that team to um, how can I incorporate behavior into that already existing team? It may be that you want to form a whole entirely new team, and that's OK, too. Um, we just need you to have a building level team that is meeting monthly. Uh, we get often, we're asked, well, how many people should be on that team? Ideally, four or five is a really good number. Um, if you get too big, eight or 10, yes, we will work with your team. But as your team gets larger, you guys know the dynamics just get a little bit harder to manage. So four to five is ideal, but we don't really put a, a limit on that. I would say any less than four, it's really difficult. So um, I would try to aim toward four to five. The second requirement, all team members must attend at least day one of the school-wide positive behavior support training that's offered by the Arkansas Behavior Support Specialist. Um, so we want all of your team members to attend that so everyone's on the same page. We're all speaking a common language. And we are giving a team, we are giving you a little bit of grace. So if you've not attended that training yet, we just want you to attend day one prior to September 1st. It is a two day training and it is a um, we say training, but really it's a time for your team to get to come together and learn about those tier one uh, tier one supports, those supports for all students. And we incorporate a lot of work time. So you have a lot of time to discuss and work through the concepts that we're presenting in the training. And if you haven't you haven't attended that training, you don't know where to sign up. Uh, we will help you. So you can reach out to your 
your educational service cooperatives behavior support specialist and they will help you get in contact with one of those trainings you can also find that list of trainings on our website which is www.arbss.org and we'll talk more about our website in just a little bit too um, so both day one and day two must be attended by all team members we have just found that that is just a crucial component to having successful teams but you must attend day one prior to September 1st before we get kicked off with BX3. The third component is that we would like to have a signed letter of understanding that's submitted with your application. And that outlines the responsibilities of the behavior support specialist, what you can expect from our roles and responsibilities, as well as what we expect from the behavior team, um, their roles and responsibilities. And that must be signed by an administrator, the superintendent, and whoever the team leader is for the behavior team. And that administrator and the behavior team leader may be the same person. And when, when we are talking about team members, um, your behavior team should include at least one administrator. That could be a principal or assistant principal, either one is fine, but it is crucial to have a administrator as part of that behavior team. Okay, so if your building level team is accepted into the VX3 pro, um, project, then we these are just kind of outlining some of the expectations that we will have. Um, those team members will attend a one day regional kickoff meeting and those will likely be at an educational service cooperative but once we have all of our teams that are selected, we will choose a common area so um, somewhere that's it's convenient for the districts to come to to have that regional kickoff and that regional kickoff is just we're going to spend some time getting to know the teams gearing them up for the school year, and then we're also going to walk the, the teams through the complete completion of the tiered fidelity inventory to assess where we are currently with uh, positive behavior supports. And then we will help the team develop, again, we're going to help them develop those SMART goals that are based off the TFI and create that individualized action plan. And that's one of the, the things we love about the X3 project is it's individualized to your district. We are looking at what your district needs are. We're not trying to put you into a, into a box where you know, you're just going to go through prescribed trainings. We're going to look and see where are you at and where what are your needs. Now, based on some of those TFI goals, you may determine that you do need some additional training or your district, your building, excuse me, needs additional training. And we've had that we've had districts who have worked on some behavior um their SMART goals, and they've realized mm -hmm. we want our whole staff trained on this. We want our whole staff trained on um, how to use the student intervention matching form. And we've gone in and provided that training for the district. Or we want all of our staff trained on classroom behavior management. And we've gone in and provided that on a PD day. Um, so part of your goals may include professional development opportunities. Um, and if that is the case, then we will help provide those training opportunities. But our primary goal is to come in and, and just coach your district where you're at right now and how to move you forward. And so part of that commitment is meeting with BX3 coaches approximately six times throughout the course of the school year. So we'll do our kickoff in September and then in October, we'll start those coaching sessions where we come to your building and we spend some time with your behavior team, helping them um, re develop and reach those goals. Those coaching sessions typically last two to three hours. So that's something to be prepared for is that you need to be able to step away and dedicate some time about two to three hours for this coaching session. Um, and we also one of the things we found that's been most successful with our teams that we have right now is that they just dedicate that whole day to their behavior team. So we may come in and do a coaching session that morning from like 830 to 1130, 830 to 1030, and they spend the rest of the day working with um, as together as a team working on uh, continuing that conversation, continuing to talk about how are they going to meet those SMART goals, how um, what are the steps in our action plan to do that. So that's just kind of a tip that we've learned that our teams have been really successful with. 
And then we also would like those teams to hold independent monthly behavior meetings between coaching sessions. So our goal is to help you develop those processes, those procedures that you need in place to run your behavior system. Um, when we're, you know, we're not there to help you run that. We're here to help you coach that system. So we want to make sure that you have the system in place that will sustain your behavior team and your, your tiered system of support for behavior. So that's kind of what the expectations are and is kind of an overall um, explanation of what some of those expectations are. And again, it's a one-year commitment, but teams do have the option to continue the following year if they're making progress. And I can say right now that so far of those that um, we have a deadline, but so far uh, several of our teams have, majority of our teams have decided to continue another year because they're making some great progress. It's very exciting. So looking at a timeline of when does, when does this all need to happen? How does this going along? Uh, well, the commissioner's memo was released last Monday. And we wanted to give you a few weeks to complete that application, learn more about BX3, ask your questions, uh, get your signed letter of understanding. So applications will be due by April 14th at 4.30. So close of business day on April 14th, those applications are due. It is a short Google form to complete. And um, we also make sure that you're submitting and attaching your letter of understanding with that because that is part of your application. We will turn around and review those applications. And then by May 5th, we will notify your team on whether or not you've been accepted into BX3. So your team leader, as well as your superintendent, will be notified of your acceptance into the program. And then September, our accepted teams will attend a regional team member. So between May 5th and September, even maybe now by September, we encourage you if you have team members or your team has not attended this, the five essential components of school-wide positive behavior supports, go ahead and sign up for that training. And again, if you need assistance with that, reach out to your behavior support specialist, check out our website. Um, we have a whole tab dedicated to that. And you can find a local training. We will help help you get in connected with the training. We want everyone to have that opportunity. And then October, our coaching sessions will begin. And those are monthly coaching sessions. So starting in October into the end of the school year, we will um, be coaching your team through the process. So those are those are those important timelines that you need to kind of have in mind with you. And just also let you know the, the level of commitment that is involved. Um, we've had questions before. All of the services provided by the BX3 are free of charge. So there is not any cost for your district to participate in this beyond the cost that you may have if you need classes covered. So any type of substitute or anything like that, as well as travel to the regional meeting um, that one time in September. Those may be the only kind of associated cost with participation in the BX3 project. So I am currently, we are supporting 20 school building level teams across the state. Um, we have teams in all areas of the state. So um, they're, they're making so much progress. We love seeing the progress that they've made. And I've asked Allison Mears, one of our BX3, she's a fabulous BX3 coach. Her teams are amazing. I've asked her just to kind of share some of the experiences that those BX3 teams have had this year and some of the progress that they've made. Thanks, Sheila. So I have had the privilege of coaching five BX3 schools this year in Southwest Arkansas. And I will say that they started on very different ends of the spectrum. So we had some that were at 60% on their TFI, which is almost meeting proficiency in tier one. And then we had some that started at 20% on the TFI. And they were like, Allison, we don't have anything. And the beauty of this is it doesn't matter where you are. We're going to come in, we're gonna assess your building with you, and then we're gonna pick goals. Or really the team is gonna pick goals and we're just there to support and help coach through it. And so we have had several that 
have gone up 20 to 30 points on the TFI, several that have met proficiency now in tier one, and we are already moving into tier two. Um, we have seen little schools, big schools, we have seen everybody had success with this. Um, I will say that if you've participated in BX3 in the past, it's very different than it was then. And I, I have a school right now who went through the first cohort of BX3 and is now in the a th third cohort of BX3 and it looks very different and they're experiencing um, success with that again. I will say that some of our districts feel like, oh, we've got positive behavior supports down. We are rewarding them. We are doing all those things, but they're not seeing drastic results. And so my friend Shana, she has this great car analogy that you can have the most beautiful car, but if you don't have tires and you don't have gas and you don't have a motor, then it's not going to go anywhere. And that's what we find is that we have a lot of buildings around the state who are doing phenomenal work, but they don't have all of the components. And so it's not all meshing. And oftentimes our teachers become frustrated, like I'm giving out all these points and nothing's happening and this is not even helping. And so what we want to do is make sure all the components are there and everything is aligned. So your rewards are aligned to your discipline process, to um, the, you know, the way that you're handling discipline, all of those things need to, to really be aligned. Um, we've seen really, really, really great success. And if you are on the fence, I would say I can get you in contact with some people that are currently in the trenches in this so that you can say, hey, is it worth it or not? And they will so yes, it is because most of them are coming back. Um, but I would love for you to uh, to get you in contact with somebody if you're really not sure, or we can just chat and discuss it and make sure that it is a right fit for you because it is a big commitment. I would say the biggest takeaway that my buildings would say, the basic, biggest uh, success would be having protected time to work on this. So we rarely have any schools that say, I don't wanna do that, but we have a ton of schools that say, I don't have time to do that. And um, so this is us saying, hey, let us help you and, and carving out that time so that they can make it happen. Mm -hmm. And so that's all I have. Thank you, Allison. Um, it's been great. And if you follow our social media, Facebook page, Instagram, you'll see those teams. We highlight those teams and the progress that they make. And they've been so excited about the progress that, that they've made. And the main reason being ex excited about the progress is they're seeing changes. They're seeing results. They're seeing those office discipline referrals decrease. Um, they're seeing the morale of their teachers and their students increase. They're seeing more positive behaviors in on their campus, more recognition for those positive behaviors. And it all, um, it all, their teachers know what steps to follow when it comes to discipline referrals. There's no wondering, um, is this an office referral or is this something I need to handle in my classroom? Um, there are steps and procedures that the team has developed with input from their teachers that have helped them outline those steps to follow of discipline uh, in the classroom. And then when that needs to be referred to the principal and how to handle that. So we've just seen so much progress from those who have participated in BX3 and moving forward. And the great thing is like their teams, their teams are doing the work and we're there just to help you coach you through the process and help facilitate that work. Um, so it's been very encouraging for us. We love working with building level teams and seeing the progress. And like Allison said, it doesn't matter where you are um, in the process. If you are at ground zero, that's great because we have a lot of room that we can make progress and we can see some growth very quickly. So we would um, just encourage you to apply. So we're gonna, go ahead. Sheila, I have a couple of questions. Um, yeah, that's perfect timing. We're at Q&A. Perfect. Okay, so one question was about high school campuses that are participating. Yeah. 
I have Mina High School that is participating, making great progress. Does anybody else have any high school? We have Bald Knob. Okay. Bald Knob High School and then Pottsville Junior High is also. Have, and they are a sixth through ninth campus. Yes. Our Bald Knob uh, High School is doing great. Um, I think that the most important thing to take away is carving out those spaces for your team your teams to have those times together that has made the biggest difference in all of my teams are meeting with us, of course, but then also having that monthly meeting that uh, Sheila was talking about just a little bit earlier, having those teams, but we do have high schools and um, it's, it's great for high schools as well. And we realize there is a vast difference between the way positive behavior supports run in elementary versus how it runs in middle school, junior high, and high school. And so that's where the individualization comes in of, yes, we, we, we do want behavior expectations and we do want rewards and recognition programs, but that needs to look a little bit different at high school versus elementary. Um, the beauty of it is if you start at elementary and you continue that through middle school, junior high, high school, then you're just setting your, your students up for success. And I think having a positive mindset, like some of this, what we've learned is that you have to really work with um, your behavior team really has to work with the staff. It has to work with everyone in your building to um, to really help them understand the importance of positive behavior supports and a tiered system of delivery, but then also to listen to what they're telling you and receiving that input, getting your stakeholder input and, and getting everyone in the right mindset. So we're in the mindset to implement this successfully. All right, so what's next? Then another question is, do the team members need to attend school-wide positive behavior support first meeting together or if someone cannot go to the meeting on a certain day, could they attend one at a later date prior to September 1st? Okay, that is a great question. And we encourage your team to attend all together because you are doing a lot of work related to um, all of the concepts that we present. And so we present and we talk about a behavior matrix and then we give your time, we give your team some time to really talk about what does that look like for our school district? What do we need to do to get that input? How is this going to work? And so if all your team members are there, it just makes the conversation just more rich. Um, However, if we will be willing to work with the team, it's going to be on a case by case basis. So if you do have a team member that's unable to attend the whole training with the team or you'd like to onboard a new team member, that person is still going to be required to come to school wide. But we we may be able to talk about how we can make that happen. Okay, also another question, do you do the teams for the district need to be separated for buildings? or would that be different teams? So BX3, uh, in the past, if you're familiar with it, when we started with cohorts one and two, it was a district level initiative. And we learned that each building within a district is individual. It's different, it has different needs. We definitely promote consistency among the district, but we also realize that districts have individual and unique needs. So we do, it is BX3 now with our cohort three and upcoming cohort four is really focused on building level teams. So if you're in a district and you want several buildings to participate, then put in an application for each of those buildings. And we do have that. We have several districts who have different, you know, buildings, level teams. Allison, you have several, right? Mina, Mina has three different teams currently going through right now. Mm -hmm. And and the beauty is I can say, hey, this is what so-and-so are doing so that we can see some consistency um, throughout the buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt has a question. He says, I know this is a free program, but what did you say the district would be responsible for? Okay, great. Let's let's revisit that. Um, so in terms of cost, we do not charge you for BX3. Our services are completely free. And even if you decide BX3 is not the right fit for you, but you would like to attend school-wide positive behavior support training, all of our pro professional developments are free of charge. Um, all of our resources are free of charge. We are federally grant funded, and that's a service that we provide. 
Um, when you're looking at costs, we don't want you to think there's not any cost associated. So if you have teachers on your building level teams, then when your teachers are participating in BX3 coaching and you may have to have a substitute cover their class, that would be a fee that you would incur, you know, on your on your behalf, the, the building's behalf. Uh, that you would have to cover, as well as um, your regional meeting. It's really, we can't give you a location for those regional meetings yet because it's going to depend on geographically where those teams are that we accept. But um, those re once those regional meetings are determined, you may have to travel, you know, to that regional meeting in September. So mileage um, and meals that are associated with that one day of travel would be a cost to consider as well. And then Sheila, I was going to say sometimes if your district chooses to adopt a reward program such as live school or whatever that may be, um, there you know there may be a, a cost associated with that yes. in the future, but nothing that we are going to charge you for. Absolutely. When you start to talk about your rewards and recognition systems, you know there may be some fees associated with that. Um, we have been very creative in helping districts come up with some ways to, to work around those and to really reach out and use their community resources when they're looking at their rewards and recognitions programs. That's all the questions that are in the chat. Um, anyone is welcome to drop more questions in the chat, unmute, ask them. Allison, could I just reference back the first question about all the team members need to attend? Um, if that date in their area does not work out, on our website, it does have other co-ops that might be close to their surrounding area that they could attend it together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. We, we will work with you in any capacity, you know, any way that we can to help ensure that you attend a training. Okay. Other questions that you guys may have or other input from any of the other BSS? I'm going to give them an opportunity as well. Okay. One more just came in. How will or how can we be notified of professional development opportunities? Great question. Great question, and that's a great transition because I'm going to head on over to our website, and so you can find us at arbss.org, and uh, you can see our website is um, it's updated with all of our professional learning opportunities. So if you click on the professional learning, you'll see in-person learning, learning, sorry, and then um, those will just link you to all of the trainings that we offer, course descriptions, and then we have a calendar and we have this great little tool over here that will help you filter through training titles, um, if there's a specific training that you're looking for, or if you want to find something that's in your educational service cooperative location, then you can click on that tab and it will help you filter through that way. Um, so just multiple ways that you kind of filter through to find those trainings. And also, we have a tab specifically for the five essential components of school-wide positive behavior supports. And I know one of the questions we received in the past is, what if we've already attended some trainings? What if we've gone through, um, you know, some of the other trainings that are offered throughout the state? That's phenomenal. We love that you're accessing all of your resources. Um, we also would like for you to attend the five essential components of school-wide positive behavior supports because that is the foundation of the work um, It is that you're going to do to build those positive behavior supports, those tiered systems of supports. And it's based on the tiered fidelity inventory. So this is, this is the starting place for all of uh, all of the work that you will do in BX3. But I do encourage you, if you decide, you know, we, we're just not ready, quite ready for the commitment that's involved with BX3, I encourage all of your teams to attend the five essential components of school-wide positive behavior supports because it's just going to help you have that, that foundation and you can start to do some of the work yourself. Um, so as you scroll down on this tab, 
you'll see a short little introduction video of the importance of positive behavior supports as well as our training goals. If you want to find out more about the tiered fidelity and inventory, it is um, it's a document through the positive behavioral intervention and support, so the PBIS. Um, then you can click on there, you can download it and take a look at how it's how it's divided into the three sections. And when we talk about tier one, those are those universal supports for all students. All your students should be receiving tier one supports. And then tier two um, is going to be your targeted supports. That's like 10 to 15 percent of your students. And then tier three, that's the top of the pyramid. You should have about five percent of your students that need those intensive individualized intervention efforts. So great tool there that we base uh, the work on. And then we talk about what topics are covered in this training. And you've heard us mention all of these things um, as we've talked through. And like Allison said with the car analogy, um, it's important that we've walked into school buildings that have a behavior matrix and that is posted on the wall and it is beautiful but it's not tied to lesson plans for teaching those expectations. It's not tied to your procedures for discipline. The rewards and recognitions are not tied to your behavior matrix. Your behavior matrix is kind of the foundation. It's like the engine of that car um, and everything else is kind of built around that your classroom systems as well. So you will see all of the upcoming training options for school-wide positive behavior supports um, that, are, that are available. So you can register for those. It is not just, we don't have just an open ESC works. You have to click on and complete the form. And then we will email you the ESC works because it is not a training that just individuals can attend. We want the school team to attend. So you can see there's lots of different options throughout the state uh, of where that training is provided. And if you're finding difficulty, just kind of finding one that's going to work for you, let us know. We will work with you the best of our abilities to make sure that you can attend that. Um, and then we just, we invite you to check out the other sections. We have behavior breaks that are great, just short instructional videos, but you will see the BX3 tab. Um, so all the information that we've talked about, this Zoom uh, informational meeting will be posted, but it will also give you a short kind of um, video explaining why BX3 is in so important in having those positive behavior supports um, and how that is essential for both student and teacher success. You, there's a link to the commissioner's memo. We have the application linked here, the timeline, some of the key highlights from the BX3 project. And um, we do have some frequently asked questions here as well. And then we have a Google form that you can, there's a link to a Google form. So if you leave today, if you're like me, you just kind of have to take in all of the information. Then when you leave, a question pops up. You can, um, you can submit the question there. You can also reach out to any of your behavior support specialists. We would be happy to um, answer those questions. You can reach out to myself or Allison, who's kind of heading up our BX3 project and We'll be happy to answer any of the questions that you may have. Sheila, I just wanted to remind people as they go to arbss.org, you can um, sign up for our newsletter that comes out monthly, and that gives you great um, updates on the upcoming trainings for that month as well. So that might help answer the question about PD opportunities. Yes. Thank you, Allison. Okay, so further information, definitely check out our website. Um, all of our behavior support specialists are can be located on our website too. If you'd like to reach out to them, their contact information is on there. Other questions? We missed anything in the chat or would anyone like to unmute? We wanna make sure- There was can... one more in the chat. Uh, please expand on lesson plans for the behavior matrix. Okay, great question. Um, so when we talk about lesson plans for and any of you guys, feel free to jump in. Okay. If I don't do it justice, when we talk about lesson plans for behavior expectations, we also, we often talk about what we expect from our students. What, what do we, how do we expect them to behave? Um, but we don't teach them that we don't talk about how do we teach them those expectations. And so just to give you an example, 
I have a district that we were working with. They were struggling on the um, struggling at recess, like what just having some inappropriate behaviors at recess. So they took the portion of their behavior expectations that applied to recess. They did a giant poster. They posted it over the doorway to go to recess and every um, just they stopped and they taught, they had an, a lesson that they taught the class before they went out onto the playground on how do we well, remember these are expectations and this is how we display those behaviors. So that's one example, but we also just encourage you um, in that training to come up with a plan on how are we going to teach these behavior expectations? How are we going to incorporate that into what we're doing? So we have a lot of a lot of teams that have they may have extra time uh, incorporated into their schedule. Those are called various things, but during that that study time or that individualized, um, you know, to the time that they've set aside, that's when they incorporate their lesson plans on how they're going to teach those behavior expectations. So um, they may have short videos that the teachers have done to model how those expectations should be. When you're going out on the playground, this is what this is what we expect for you. This, so they may give some examples and some non-examples. But I think the bottom line is they have a they have a structured plan on how to teach these behavior expectations. And I know some of our districts have done some really, really extensive and some cool things uh, related to that. So if anyone else would like to share more on that, any of the BSS, please, please. Up on. I have a question, Sheila, about that. Uh, with the with the behavior uh, team be expected to to do the implement those lesson plans, or will each teacher be responsible for the, uh, providing those lesson plans to their students? Yes, that is a fantastic question, and I'm so glad you asked that. So, the behavior team is going to be responsible for talking through all of these um, all of these things that those five components that we talk about um, but they're not necessarily going to be the ones responsible for the the work you have to use your resources so we have had districts be very creative in this I know one district they use their specialty teachers and their specialty teachers come up with some of the lesson plans and um, they provide those to the teachers and the teachers um, the teachers implement those lesson plans and we're not talking about like extensive like your academic lesson plans um we're talking about very short brief lessons on how to teach those behavior expectations others have taken their grade level meetings and they've split it they've split it up so their grade they split the work up among their grade level meetings and they've come up with really short ways to teach those behavior expectations um I know Lindsay and Jennifer, you guys are working with a district that have a really cool system on how they teach those. Um, if you'd like to elaborate, I don't want to put you guys on the spot. Yeah, so we're working with a district and a few of the schools at the beginning of the year and then um, right after Christmas break. They actually rotate the students through all of the areas in the school where those behavior expectations, uh, the different locations for those behavior expectations. Um, so they'd rotate through the cafeteria, bathroom, classroom, outside recess time, any of those locations through the school. And they have one person that teaches um, the skill and the students all rotate through. So they're hearing the same thing. The teachers are all hearing the same thing. But they actually have an um, like an agenda, a um, a whole spreadsheet that says what what team, well, who is teaching, and then where the students are going, where they're going to be, and they program that through their first week of school, and then when they come back from spring break. So that's one of the ways that one of the districts is um, kind of teaches and makes sure that their students um, rehear it, especially after a long break such as Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's really, really cool the way that they've done that. One of the things we realize is every, as again, um, every district is individualized. So we want you to do what works for your building, um, what's going to work in our building, what's going to be successful. And the beauty of it is we help you come up with some of those examples. We we help coach you in coming up with some of the ideas that how how's this going to work for my building? Um 
Sheila, just to expand on that, I have a district who or several districts or buildings that are doing announcement schedules. So what is going to be on the announcement this week about our behavior expectations? So Monday might be um, P for positivity and A, uh, Tuesday might be A if your acronym is pause, whatever. But they're using a um, an announcement schedule so that nobody has to think off the cuff what is today what should we be talking about it is already written down so that that goes on the announcements or if you have a video department that makes your announcements um, they know what to focus on that day so mm -hmm. Sheila I think uh, one thing too that's what we uh, will be discussing in the school wide and give you yes. examples so that it starts the process and the conversation. And then if you do the BX3 and accepted, then that's where we get to dig a little bit deeper and assist. But the um, the school wide, that's one of the components that we will discuss and uh, start the process there. Yes, great point. And I feel like we didn't mention this earlier, so I want to mention it now, is when you're starting a new program, when you're starting a new initiative, uh, the research all shows, and we know from personal experience working with, with building level teams, it can take two to four years for implementation. Other research will show, you know, one to three, three to five, depending on what you're looking at, but bottom line, it takes time, and so this is not something a lot of this is involved in planning, planning, you know, how are we going to get our stakeholders input so that our whole staff is, is, you know, mindful of the process and has had some say in, into the process, not just a behavior team deciding all of the components and how it's going to look for the building. Um, so a lot of it is, is planning and that goes at your district's level, at your speed. Um, so there aren't specific, we, we help you set those goals in a realistic way. We want you to have some quick wins. So it feels good and you're making some progress very quickly and you can see some tangible results, but also realizing some of those goals are going to be more long-term and it's going to take us a while. We know, um, it's going to take at least a year's process to get, you know, some of those tier one supports planned and, and somewhat into implementation. Other questions that yeah, I, don't see any, I don't see any others in the chat. Okay. Any others that anyone would like to unmute? Okay. Well, if something comes up, please reach out to us. We definitely want to offer you any assistance. And like we said earlier, if BX3, we would love for all of your, your teams to apply for BX3. But if you feel like it's not the best fit right now for your district, for your building, then please, um, you know, access some of our professional development. We'd love to work with you in any capacity. Okay, I kept it under an hour. So that's a win for today on a Monday morning. Um, just we wish you guys all the, the best of luck for the end of your school years. And please reach out to us if you have any additional questions.